start it's off the clock, of course, by <coughs> telling you two or three sentences about us each. And then we're going to ask you to tell us your name because we have to write them down. <laughs> and, uh, so, so I can start by telling you that my name is John Morrison. I live in Evanston. I was at Kirkland and Ellis in Chicago for nearly 40 years and I've been retired for 20. I do a lot of pro bono work, but I don't do anything else that people pay me for. <laughs> That's part of retirement under the Illinois laws. My name is Damon Gupta. I'm an associate at Green Griffith and Board Green. We do intellectual property. I was a student at Chicago Kent seven years ago. That makes me sound even older. Um, <laughs> My area is intellectual property, so patents, trademarks, trade secrets, that kind of thing. Um, Mine was antitrust. It's totally different. <laughs> uh, I had some experience with negotiation growing up in a family business, and then, of course, did all school with them. So uh, you might get some tougher questions from me later, but uh, don't let that scare you. Congratulations on making it over here. Thank you. Uh, Jerry Jakubik. Uh, I was with Baker McKenzie and retired now. Uh, and uh, I was uh, mainly focusing in my practice on finance and financial aid products. So it's nothing completely <laughs> <laughs> But I've done a lot of negotiation. Great. Okay. So let's uh, yeah. start by having the first team, I guess team O, step out for the uh, pre-negotiation pre yeah. analysis. It's actually me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have step it's up. the other way around. Oh, that's right, first letter. See what happens when you're an associate and you lose sense of the alphabet. Oh, that's it. That's how to be, and I'm You're an associate. And I didn't correct you at all. We didn't have good names. We'll do that. We need to write them down. We need to do the pre-negotiation. You're in charge. So before we start the clock, can you please just tell us your names? Yeah. Maria, M-A-R-I-A. And Sydney, S Y D N E Y. Would you like our last names too, or that's okay? That doesn't just okay. identify okay. who we all are. <laughs> Great. And are we ready? Yes. Yeah. All right, let us begin. Good afternoon again. I'm Maria. And I'm Sydney. We are Team O, representing Miss Walker. We've been asked to answer several questions for you today. And the first question is What are your client's main interests and goals for the negotiation? When preparing for a negotiation, we begin by trying to identify our own client's interests. And here, we've identified one of our client's main interests to be that her value be recognized at this jail. She is somebody who is a stellar employee. She has excellent, excellent credentials. She had multiple promotions. Um, she's somebody who goes as far as helping to mentor other employees who needed help passing their fitness tests. So she's very devoted and wants that to be recognized. <clears throat> Secondly, she wants the ability to be able to work in a fair environment, especially when it comes to future hiring decisions. She wants to know that it's an objective process and that people are considered fairly when those decisions are made. Finally, our client wants to feel respected and not have doubts as to whether decisions are being made based on nonconformity. So overall, the environment of the workplace is going to be something that's very important to her. Once we've identified our own client's interests, we then move to try to anticipate what the other side will be concerned with. Here we believe the other side's main concern will be protecting their reputation. If a discrimination claim becomes very public, it could be catastrophic for the jail, and there could also be a floodgate effect. Um, our client is aware of a few other employees at the jail who identify um, as lesbian women, and if they were to find out that she was feeling discriminated against, it could create a spiral effect that could be very detrimental for the jail. Secondly, we do think that the other side will be interested in keeping Ms. Walker as an employee given her excellent reputation and credentials. Overall, our main goal for this negotiation is to obtain employment as a CO4 for Ms. Walker and to put safeguards in place that prevent any future discrimination on the basis of nonconformity. So now I will proceed to the second question, which is what is your overall negotiation strategy and why? So we'll start by introducing ourselves and our client to provide additional background information and give context to our conversation today. Then we'll concentrate on learning the other side's interests by engaging and asking a series of questions. 
So for example, we'll want to understand more about the decision-making process or if there were any other issues with Ms. Hernandez in the past. Once we understand the other side's interests, we will um, structure our negotiation around a few mutual ones. We feel that it's beneficial to wait to structure our conversation so that we can really understand what the other side is trying to get out of our conversation and ensure that it's, um, you know, we've only been allotted um, 50 minutes and make sure that it's beneficial for both sides. In particular, we will have to be aware that we discuss the non-discriminatory policy before discussing attorney's fees. Because in order to waive the attorney's fees for our client, we would have to have a non-discriminatory policy and an agreeable settlement here today. After we have a few major talking points, we'll start by, uh, by making sorry offers and trading. We've come prepared today with a number of creative options in order to significantly increase the value of the deal for both sides. So for example, we would ask that uh, Ms. Walker, our client, be able to be a leader of an affinity group in the jail. Additionally, we would ask that she have the right of first refusal for a future CO4 position upon uh, its opening. And lastly, we would also ask that if uh, Ms. Hernandez does need to, in the future, perform a performance review for our client, that there be certain criteria that are met in order to ensure that it is in fact objective and that feedback is given on the bottom of the review so that our client can continue to improve. With that, we are excited to see how our plan plays out and thank you for your time today. Afternoon. My name is Taylor Calvert, and today I'll be representing Campbell County Jail in a negotiation with the retained counsel for Ms. Dre Walker. So we're meeting here today to address a charge of discrimination that Ms. Walker has alleged against Campbell County Jail. I will be addressing two questions today. First, what are my client's goals and interests? And second, what is my overall negotiation strategy and why? And then I'll provide an analysis or a framework of some options that my client has given me today to offer the other side at some point. So first, to address the first question, my client's goals are first to maintain good employee morale. Um, you can't maintain good employee morale in a discriminatory environment. So if, there, if Campbell County Jail does, in fact, have issues of discrimination, we need to address those to maintain good employee morale. Next, it's going to be maintaining a legal and um, fair hiring process. We want the best of the best employees, and you're not going to get that by having an unfair process. So we do, we do take pride in hiring the best that we have available from our applicant pool, and we want to continue doing that. Next, it's going to be avoiding litigation, but also balancing that against avoiding bad precedent. My clients have expressed some concern regarding future employees trying to use this as an avenue to obtain some accommodations that might not necessarily be fair because they're unfounded claims as of yet. Now I'm going to move on to my negotiation strategy and why. So the strategy I'm going to implement today is a problem-solving approach, mainly because we do foresee a continuing relationship with uh, Ms. Walker, and we want that to be a positive one. So far, it's been a little damaged by, by the issue at hand today, so we really want to focus on improving that throughout this negotiation. I'm going to implement this strategy in three ways. First, it's going to be gathering some information. I really need to ascertain what their overall goals are. Um, in particular, it's really concerning that she did not or maybe she did, but she just chose not to, did not feel comfortable going to her supervisor first with her concerns, but instead went to Rustin. So is there some sort of rift there that we're, that we're unaware of and that we can fix today at the table? Um, also, maybe there's an, under, an underlying goal that money can't buy that, they, that they're really pushing for that I need to ascertain. Because my, my max is $2,000, so I can't, I can't imagine that they're suing for monetary damages there has to be some sort of other issue that I can address. Yeah. The second element is going to be remaining transparent. 
My client has given me some hard limits today, and when they become relevant to the negotiation, I think it's going to be important to let the other side know so we can find some other avenues of addressing their concerns. Also, they received a long list of, we can't do this, we can't do that, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that, and I'm not really sure if they were ever provided an explanation, and I think an explanation would be helpful for them to understand my client's position. And then my third element is just going to be working on that relationship for the future, and I'm going to do that by sympathizing with her. I understand that just being discriminated against does not feel good, and we don't want that for you at um, Campbell County Jail. And also understanding that she's a great employee and her track record is amazing and we really do appreciate her being an employee at Campbell County. So now I'm going to take the time to provide an analysis, analysis of the different options that we have available. As I mentioned, I'm only authorized to go up to $2,000 of a lump sum payment and that is contingent on a release of claims and uh, particularly the release of the EOC charge that she is alleging. I'm also um, authorized to guarantee a position for her for the next CO4 opening that we predict will become opening in March 2020, but nobody wants to, you know, promise a position to someone, but I am authorized to do so. That would include an NDA because if word got out that we're saving positions, that could be problematic for employee morale down, uh, down the road, which is something that we want to maintain. Um, I'm also authorized to draft a policy that addresses uh, sexual orientation not being considered in the hiring place. I'm hoping that can be a collaborative agreement so that we definitely address their concerns. And then I'm also authorized to offer an investigation into the claims uh, against Ms. Hernandez and her discriminatory role. And then I really do hope we have time to get, some to get to some creative solutions, in particular creating a process that she feels comfortable with for reporting these issues in the future, and not just her, but all, um, all of our employees and possibly doing a feature with Rustin after coming to an apol a policy that they, they agree to and that they like for a joint media campaign stating that we're a good place to work for if you're diverse. I look forward to sitting down with the other side and coming to a solution that meets, uh, meets both of our concerns adequately. Thank you. Hi. Sydney. Taylor Calvert. Nice to Maria. Meet you. Nice Taylor to meet Calvert. you. Nice Thank you so you. much for coming in today to meet with us. To reintroduce ourselves, my name is Sydney, and this is my co-counsel, Maria, and we are representing Ms. Walker, who was hired in June of 2007 and currently holds a CO3 rank. In July of 2018, she applied for the promotion to rank as a CO4 but was not selected as Ms. Hernandez was instead. And our client does feel that she was discriminated against on the basis of sex, and so this is a very personal matter for her. Um, I do want to take a moment to emphasize how valuable of an employee she is. Um, Ms. Walker received a, an accelerated promotion. Uh, she, is a, she's a, she is a, excuse me, she has multiple degrees. Uh, she's, she's an employee that will go out of her way to mentor other employees to ensure that they're able to, to pass their fitness tests. And so she is a very devoted employee. Uh, she has received excellent reviews throughout her time at the jail. Um, and so that's something that she really wants to be recognized by your client. Um, something that would be really helpful for us, I think, is to understand what exactly is the hiring process. So in terms of that, do you mean who does the hiring? Okay, well, Mr. Cleaver is actually in charge of well, actually the oversight of the whole facility. So hiring and firing is typically his responsibility, but as the head person, he can defer those responsibilities and he defers those to Mr. or uh, well, Captain Brown because he's on the, he's like on the floor with these guys. So he knows their inner workings. He knows who's gonna be best for a position and who's not. So he is the person who does the hiring. And so in terms of the position for CO4, mm -hmm. when comparing uh, Ms. Hernandez and our client, do you have any details as to how that comparison was made and the conclusion that we have today? Yeah, so I don't have any details specifically on like who checked out here, who checked out here. I know that what it came down to was experience and um, Ms. Hernandez does have more experience than Ms. Walker. And it came down to seniority also and she is the more senior out of the two. And just to follow up on your expression of how great of an employee she is, Mr. Uh, Captain Brown is just, he loves her so much and he thinks that she's a great employee. And she, I mean, she was really strongly considered for this position, but Ms. Um, Hernandez does take kind of the cake in those two categories. And that's what the decision was based on. Well, we are happy to hear that he, he loves her so much um, and that she is valued. Um, 
Just from our perspective, we do understand that she did have a few more years of experience. However, when we do uh, compare the two, uh, it, it, it looks to us like Miss, uh, Miss Walker is somebody who really did go above and beyond. She was one of the only women to ever uh, work in the male wing to the extent that she does. Uh, she also has an associate's degree, like I mentioned. And uh, those are things that we just think really, really make her stand out. And uh, that's, that's kind of why she was a little bit upset to find out that Ms. Hernandez ultimately ended up with this position. And while Ms. Hernandez may have the experience in terms of you know seniority and the length of time mm -hmm. at the jail, we believe that our client actually has more experience in terms of the day to day. Mm -hmm. As again, she was um, you know operating in the male wing on RRU, had this degree in place, and so when we look at the two candidates, aside from just the length of time at the jail, we just want to reiterate that this is where our client's frustration and discrimination claim is really coming from. I understand um, your concerns, I really do, but as far as this position, it's been given to Ms. To Ms. Hernandez, and I've expressed the criteria that it has been given on. I can tell you right now that it was never a discriminatory issue because the person who made the decision actually had no knowledge of her, of her orientation. So it's kind of hard to make a discrimination um, claim on that. He had no knowledge of it. And again, like I said, she was a strong, strong candidate, and he just thought that those two criteria were more important for this position. Well, thank you. That's very reassuring to hear um, that they actually had no knowledge of her sexual orientation because she was very concerned that that, that was a factor, um, that, that it was di discrimination based on her nonconformity. Right. Um, an another question we did have was if there have been any other issues with Ms. Hernandez in the past with other employees? So I'm, I'm not able to discuss past disciplinary issues. Um, we, we pride ourselves in keeping any past disciplinary issues of any any employee private because that's not good for employee morale if your coworker knows about any type of disciplinary issues that have um, been addressed with you. So I'm going to return a question and is that do you have does your client have any interactions with her, Ms. Hernandez that we need to be made aware of outside of this hiring process? So there were two occasions um, from our client's perspective there were some very disrespectful and offensive comments uh, that she overheard in one in one instance, uh, she was working the same shift as Mrs. Hernandez, and that's how she heard the comment. Okay. Um, in another situation, it was also a, a social setting, and again, these are these are deeply offensive to anybody, but especially to Miss Walker. Um, and so, upon hearing those things, of course, she was concerned about. She didn't know whether whether anybody hi higher up than Miss Hernandez was aware of those things, but she was concerned that that perspective of women who identify as lesbian was something that was going to become uh, a factor in the future. And, but we are happy to hear uh, that you mentioned that there are uh, procedures in place. Mr. Cleaver has the oversight and he does defer to Captain Brown. Yes. Um, and so it is an objective process and especially the fact that there was no knowledge of her sexual orientation. I think Mrs. Walker would be really happy to hear that there was fairness in that decision. Okay. And just a quick question is is there any reason that she felt uncomfortable going to her supervisor to discuss that those issues with Miss um, Hernandez that she had overheard so the the fact that this position was opening up and she was in the running for it against Miss Hernandez um, our client just felt that it would it would portray a sense of um, trying to get the position just by you know bad mouthing someone okay. that she was running against and so okay. it wasn't about really a comfort aspect she okay. I you know, we're not aware of if it, it had anything to do with the higher ups, but okay. in terms of just the overall situation, it was best that she just not disclose it. And really, she wanted the position on the basis of her own merits, right? And, and did not want to have to go and report this, and then you know, Miss Hernandez think that she is trying to undermine her. Exactly. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Thank you for that. Great. So I think that. We, you know, understanding exactly the hiring process definitely reassures our, us and we're, we'd be happy to report back to our client that this process was not something that was definitely on the basis of her uh, discrimination on the basis of sex. And I think moving Great. forward, uh, it would be helpful to structure the rest of our conversation chronologically okay. so that we could first discuss past issues with regard to Ms. Hernandez, but it seems like we have covered a lot of that thus far. Mm -hmm. um, next, we could move to discussing Ms. Walker's future employment. Okay. And then finally, moving to discuss a non-discriminatory policy at the jail for the future.
Okay. And so moving into the past issues with regard to Ms. Hernandez specifically, our client, of course, um, does not want Ms. Hernandez to be responsible for any of her performance reviews in the future. This comes from the fact that our client has received 18 Excel reviews and five above average reviews. And the review that Ms. Hernandez had given was the lowest that she ever received and feels that she was not evaluated um, objectively. Okay, actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Our client was actually rather surprised by that um, review as well, because like I said, he just thought she was this amazing employee and it didn't. this was just out of left field for him. You know, she had been excelling and then she got adequate. So it didn't really add up for our client either. And I am perfectly fine to agreeing that Ms. Hernandez will not do any more performance reviews for your client, especially if that makes her more comfortable in the workplace at Campbell County. Just to follow up, you said that your client was surprised, which is obviously, um, we're, we're happy to hear that, being that you know we were surprised to hear about the review as well. Is there a process where you know the either Mr. Cleaver or Captain Brown review these um, performance reviews just because obviously this one will still be in her file, and so we're curious about the potential for of you know it, like possibly being removed. Yes, um, I can take that back to my client. I don't have any. Any, any information regarding if they have that much of a say on what actually goes in the file. I just know it was kind of alarming because her track record was so was so good before. But it's definitely something I can take back to my client to see if he's amenable to just striking it and then moving forward. Great, and it's just really a matter of she is proud of her reputation. Right. Um, and for there to be progress that kind of mischaracterizes how she feels she did, it, it's something that was um, it was something that, that bothered her a little bit. So we're happy to hear you can definitely take that back to your client. Mm -hmm. Additionally, our client was um, not only concerned about obviously her future for within the jail in terms of promotion and the impact that the review can have, but also um, in just you know working day to day and the shifts. Mm -hmm. And so our client would be looking to avoid being placed on any shifts where Ms. Hernandez would have to be the supervisor and if she were to be the supervisor, we would ask that the jail agree to make Ms. Hernandez attend an equal opportunity training program. Okay, so I'm gonna address your um, concern in two parts. As far as not being on shifts with Ms. Hernandez, this would be a, a, a pretty heavy burden on the jail because it has a lot of shifts to manage and they're, they're primarily concerned with just making sure those shifts are covered in order to adequately supervise the inmates. So I cannot agree to that they will never be on the shift together. And as far as forcing her to um, attend training, we're actually doing, a, we're actually wanting to do a training for all of our employees. And so it will be mandatory, so she would attend that way. Um, I just wanna ask a clarification question. So it would, it would be maybe an administrative burden. We understand that they're juggling a lot of shifts and schedules. Um, they may not be able to completely avoid having Ms. Walker be on the same shift as Ms. Hernandez. Is there any possibility just to minimize the amount of shifts or? What I can offer is that Ms. Hernandez will never be in a leadership position on the same shift as um, Ms. Walker. That's what I can offer. I can, and I can express to my client that, they that you would really appreciate him being aware of when they're scheduling, but I can't promise that she will never be on a shift, but I can promise that she won't be in a leadership position. And so, by her not like being in a leadership she, position, it, she would not be the person that Mrs. Walker is answering to correct. in her daily duties. So okay. they'd just be doing duties together. She would not be reporting to Ms. Uh, Hernandez. Okay. That's definitely something that our client would appreciate. I think the fear is that Ms. Hernandez would be the supervisor. And so mm -hmm. if they are on equal they playing fields. They would be on fields, equal playing fields. Then that would be great. And also we are happy to hear that the training would be across the jail for all employees. because. Right. Again, although this situation is It's unique, rather localized, but I think that this is an opportunity to educate everybody about sex discrimination, and just discrimination in general. So I just think this is an opportunity for education and so does my client. So we're implementing mandatory training. Great, that's great to hear. Um, so in terms of these past issues that we've now seemed to be able to settle, um, Miss, uh, Miss Walker, moving forward, will never be working on a shift where Ms. Hernandez has a leadership position um, and that will allow them to be operating on equal playing fields. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, there will be a, a training uh, course across the entire jail and that will provide an educational opportunity um, for everybody there 
Um, and that's definitely something that, that was really important to her client because she is looking ahead and she wants to be comfortable where she's working. Uh, so I think that would, that would really be great for her. Um, finally, because her recent review, which was done by Ms. Hernandez, was not a very accurate depiction of, of her work and was kind of harmful to her track record, um, the review that Ms. Hernandez did um, could potentially be stricken. That's something that you could I will bring back, back to, to your my client. client. Yes. Okay, great. But for the time being, we have agreed that Ms. Hernandez would not be responsible for any, any performance, performance reviews moving forward. Correct. Great. So I think we can move into um, our client's future employment at the jail. Okay. Um, our client is looking to be promoted to the CO4 position immediately. Okay. Um, she feels that, of course, as we have mentioned, Ms. Hernandez, um, you know, while deserving due to the fact that she has been at the jail for more years, our client feels that she should have been given that position before her. And so right. she would be looking for as soon as the next CO4 um, position becomes available, because we do recognize that it's limited to only 15 at right. the jail, mm -hmm. um, that it would be given to our client. Right. Okay. So as far as, so what you're asking for is that it be guaranteed to your client. The, the opening position. Okay, so there's a couple contingencies that are gonna have to be attached to um, making that uh, guaranteed for her, and that is definitely an NDA and a non-disparagement agreement. We can't have this um, getting out that we're saving positions for people because that would not increase employee morale um, or even maintain employee morale. I can't think of a time where if I applied for a job, I found out that it had already been um, guaranteed for someone that I would not feel disadvantaged. So we would need her to sign an NDA in terms to that. So just to be clear, um, when we say that she would be promoted to the CO4 position immediately, that would be as of an agreement today reached. So is there a position available that... There's not a position available today. There, There's a prediction that one will be available in March 2020, but there's no CO4 position today. So March 2020 is definitely a long time for our client. Right. Um, you know, she did expect to be in this position, um, you know, back in July of 2018 mm -hmm. when Ms. Hernandez was given it. And so waiting until March of 2020, is there any other option? There's no other option. Like you mentioned that um, our positions for CO4 are capped by the county and it's capped at 15. All 15 are filled. And I can appreciate that your client expected to be hired. I think when anybody goes for a job interview, they're expecting to get the job. So I totally understand that, but you're not always guaranteed the job. And in this case, Campbell County felt like Ms. Hernandez was the better option. And so I understand your client's expectation, but the best that we can offer her is the March 2020 position because there are no positions available thus far, so far. And the only way for her to be offered that position is for there to be that NDA in place. Yes. And with the March 2020 position, is that a guarantee that someone will be leaving? Is well, she's reaching her retirement age, so she's got to retire. Okay. okay, great. I just wanted to make sure that... It's not something that can be taken on or off the table. I right. understand. <laughs> Thank right. you. Took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so in order for our client, being that the March 2020 is the only available um, option... Currently, for, right. I, as you mentioned, it's a long time from now, so if something else were to open up... I don't see why they couldn't slot her before that. But to your knowledge, this this employee this is the only say, guaranteed option right now. Yes. And so moving forward, being that this is the only guaranteed, we would ask two things. First, that if a position did open up, our client has a right of first refusal for that position, meaning that anybody else would not be considered, mm -hmm. and our client would be automatically the one to fill that before the March 2020. Um, date okay and then also due to the fact that if there is no um, position that opens up and we do have to wait until March of 2020 our client would need to be um, compensated for the difference in the salary between the CO3 and the CO4 position we recognize uh, currently that the difference between those salaries is a hundred and seventy five dollars and we are dealing with I believe about six and a half months um, so that that number is one hundred and seventy five dollars per just period. It's just that's just the difference, or is it per week or per 
month. So it's per month. It's per month. So 175. So it's been six and a half months since July of 2018. I think it was July 23rd. Um, and then moving forward, if we have to go to March, we would obviously be adding an additional 13 months to that. So it would be a total of, pardon my math, 19.5 months. And so uh, being that um, it's the difference is $175. Mm -hmm. um, and we agree that the amount of time is 19.5 months. Our client would be asking for $150 per month until the position is filled as a CO4. So $150 per month for 19 and a half months. Yes. So a little under $3,000? Yes. Okay. Okay, well, because again, your client was not guaranteed this position, I, um, I feel uncomfortable tying this idea of wages as if she was entitled to them because she did not receive the position and it wasn't based on, which we've agreed that it's not, it wasn't based on sexual orientation. Um, so we'll have, to, we'll have to come back to this number, but as far as um, the first part of your statement with regards to right of first refusal for the upcoming position, I don't have a problem with that as far as long as there's this understanding that she needs to upkeep her employment record. She can't just fall off because she knows I have a position available, so I'm just going to chill and do what I want until this position becomes available. So if you can agree that she's going to keep on this amazing track record that she's been on, and of course with her not doing her performances, the reviews are going to be objective, um, then I can agree to the right of first refusal for, right of first refusal for the first um, part. So we definitely don't foresee any reason that she wouldn't upkeep her employment. That doesn't sound like our client, especially being, again, there was 18 reviews right. that were Excel and five that were above average. And so we can definitely agree to that. Okay. In terms of, you know, you mentioned that this job was not 100%. And while we, we did acknowledge that we hear your client's perspective of, on the di discrimination on the basis of sex, um, it is our, we are here today because there is a pending suit. Um, mm -hmm. With that in mind, um, we're obviously going to agree to disagree on the merits of that. Right. But we do feel that the reason that she was not given the position is because of that mm -hmm. and that that's why she feels that she should be compensated for the difference in the salary. Okay, by pending litigation, do you mean in terms of for your client or other type of litigation issue with this issue? You mean in terms of your client? Yes. Okay, just out of curiosity, um, do you have any any like laws that specifically say that sexual dis or sexual orientation discrimination is not legal? Because it's my understanding that our policies are compliant with federal law right now, and um, it doesn't include sexual discrimination. Now we never we do not discriminate on account of sexual discrimination, but it's hard for me to attach again this this salary that you're asking for without a claim. So I, we definitely have reviewed the the research and feel that our case is uh, is strong. We are here today to discuss, um, you know, in the shadow of the law, and so we want to reach an agreement so that both parties can move forward. Our right. client okay. is That's definitely. Appreciative and loves her job, and right. so she wants to ensure that she's continuously being promoted and being recognized and valued right. as an employee. Right. So I think that we're here today to reach a settlement that's beneficial for both parties, and right. the discussion of the law may not be necessary for that. Right, and I, I agree also, but I just I'm also going to have to protect my client's interest um, here at the table too. Also, and I don't believe my client's interests are in line with paying for a salary that was never um, guaranteed. Now, does that mean like absolutely no payment was on the table? Absolutely not. But as far as attaching it to a salary for X amount of months, um, my client will definitely not be comfortable with. So we're in agreement with the right of first refusal pending. Her um, record remains the same. And th those will be based off the objective performance right. reviews. 
And then in terms of the amount, you mentioned that your client would be willing to provide some amount. So right. um, do you mind just... Yeah, I can expand on that just a little bit more for you. So my client is willing to pay your client around 650 for um, obviously a waiver of claims because that's why we're here today to work out these claims. And could you tell us a little bit more about where you're coming up with the uh, 650? This is just a compensate, like just trying to resolve an issue. Um, I obviously don't have any hard numbers because she's not really entitled to a payment um, based on her status right now as an employee. So that's pretty much where it's coming from, just trying to extend to Olive Branch and also gain this waiver of claims for my client because sitting down today, that's kind of, as you mentioned, the purpose to avoid litigation. And the 650, is it total amount or is yes. that per? Okay, so in terms of per month, at, for the 19 and a half months, it would be $33 a month. Well, again, I'm not gonna attach it to months because she was not entitled to a salary. So if you wanna look at it in terms of months and everything I suggest to you is not gonna be adequate because that's not what my number is based on. It's not gonna be based on a salary because she wasn't entitled to this position. Okay, I think that you know understanding exactly um, your client's position, but also having to keep our clients um, interests and you know financial burdens that not having this new promotion is going to inflict. It would be best if we could just step out for a moment, and then we okay. can come back prepared with uh, an offer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor, for giving us a moment to step out. Of course. Um, the offer that you had given before we stepped out was $650, and that came with a waiver of claims. Mm -hmm. uh, you made it clear that you were uncomfortable uh, discussing the number with respect to difference in salary between CO3 and CO4, and it sounded like you were more interested in the global settlement. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've come prepared to, to move forward discussing a more global settlement number. Okay. I have a really quick question. Before you stepped outside to talk to your client, you mentioned a financial burden that your um, client received from not getting this promotion. Is there some type of expenses that she incurred by not receiving this promotion that we should be concerned of that maybe I could take into consideration with this number? It's not that there was something that came up that created an extra financial burden. Uh, it's just a matter that it was a missed opportunity of extra income for her that so, she felt okay. that she was deserving of. But okay. In addition, when she was um, in the running for the position, you obviously start to, um, you know, make financial decisions in hopes of getting that position. And so it's just something that she thought that she would get and now feels that, um, of course, by not having that promotion and being still at the same salary that she is. But no actual financial positions were changed. So based we, on it. we don't have any information in terms okay. of expenses or any sort of um, added financial burden that this may have caused okay. and so Good. unfortunately yeah. we can't provide any no. specifics on that in, in terms of discussing a more global offer rather than the per months because i know that as maria mentioned you were uncomfortable with that um we would ask for two thousand and five hundred dollars so this two thousand five hundred the way we're looking at it is there are many factors to it. Uh, we, we do want to reach a settlement. We want to be flexible, and we've heard your concerns. Mm -hmm. um, but you did also mention the NDA a little bit earlier. And we do have a concern that that our client is being silenced. And so this is something that kind of takes that into account um, while, again, trying to reach an all-encompassing type of figure that has nothing to do with really any differences in salaries. OK, I, under I understand your client's concern as far as being silenced, but you're asking us to hold a position open for one client so it won't be open I mean for your client it won't be open to any other COs so that has to be that can't be discussed for the sake of our employee morale and your I can't imagine how her coworkers would feel if they were to find out that she negotiated a, a held position well, so not, really that protects both of us in terms of that does that make sense of course well okay. not only we don't really mean in terms of the the position that's being held, we mean in terms of the discrimination claim. And so this uh, non-disclosure, non-disparagement that you had suggested before we had taken a break, mm -hmm. um, we believe would encompass anything regarding the uh, all preceding allegations. Is that not true? That particular one, no, that was not included into that NDA. That NDA was specifically for the job. Oh, okay. So okay. then I think in terms of the silencing for the discrimination claim, 
Um, obviously, that's not being taken into account here. So the non-disparagement agreement would just be about the fact that there's a right of first refusal yes. for this position and that upon the opening in March of 2020, it is 100% guaranteed to be our clients. Right. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. So our, our offer still stands at $2,500. Include So you're offering an NDA in terms of everything then in that offer? So in, in the $2,500, if there is an NDA that has um, included in it the discrimination claims that, that have um, previously happened before this meeting, mm -hmm. we would ask that our client be able to lead an affinity group in the jail. And so we do know that there's one other woman in the jail that identifies as a lesbian. And so we would ask that, that our, our client be able to lead some sort of gathering to discuss just how, you know, if how it is in the jail and a, as someone who identifies as a lesbian. So you're offering an NDA, but also allowing her to get together in the jail and discuss these claims or no? So it would not be any discussion about any claims. It's really just the fact that our client is very forward thinking and she does intend on working here for a while. And so she wants to be sure that she's in a, a safe and comfortable uh, work environment. And she believes that a way to provide some support for women who are who identify as lesbian the way she does would be to have this affinity group. Um, it would have nothing to do with anything that we're discussing here. It's okay. just a matter of being able to connect with other women who identify as uh, as lesbian the way she does. She would be silenced on the claims that were, you know, beside this this agreement. Okay. However, she wouldn't be silenced on just discussing her overall community, the impact, and you know, experience at the jail. Of okay. course, the non-disparagement covers anything negative. It would just be a, a positive experience for those that wanted to participate. Okay. So just a matter of company culture, really. Okay, so I think that's um, something that my client would be amenable to, but let's unpack these claims a little bit. That includes the claims that she's alleged in, including the conduct of Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Okay. So the charge that she's filed and the, um, the comments she overheard from Ms. Hernandez. And the waiver of claims. And the waiver of claims that I had suggested? Yes, that, that okay. would be included in this, yes. That's a little different. And of course we, we just covered that the right of first refusal still stands. Yes, all of that as still long stands. as the upkeep of the employment record um, and also then the March twenty twenty position. That's currently what we're discussing in terms of the amount of money that we can agree to to move forward. Okay. And all of that for twenty five hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are definitely amenable to work to the, affin the affinity group and um, the NDA package you have presented. All of those address my clients' um, concerns. Like I said, we're interested in maintaining employee morale, and if there is another fellow member of this community that could use some support, we are all for it. As far as the um, amount that you're requesting, that's still going to be um, out of my client's range, and I am I'm comfortable offering. Nine fifty, and I just want to reiterate how we have agreed that she's not going to do her performance reviews. Like we really are trying to make this a more comfortable environment for her. She's not going to be under Hernandez for any supervision. The performance reviews are not an option. We are going to be training our um, employees, all of them, to create a better environment for your client and any other diverse employees that we will be coming in, and that's going to be a cost to us as well. So I just want to keep those all in mind while we're discussing this number. And we definitely appreciate, you know, giving context to the number. Um, you know, for our client, she she was very specific in determining this based on the amount of months and the difference in salary. So as difficult as it is for, I, I know it seems like we're not being as flexible with our number, but we just want to be clear that that is what our client had anticipated that we do here for her today. And so coming from the $2,500 number, we would be willing to go down to $2,000. Um, again, this would include everything that we have previously discussed, and we would like to ensure that there is going to be a change to the discrimin discrimination policy that is currently in place at the jail. I know that at the beginning we had said we would first discuss past 
issues, then the future employment, and then the policy. But I think that in order to make some leeway or you know really meet in the middle here at the amount, we can maybe discuss the discrimination policy as well. Okay, so I actually had some language in mind for that. So it would be the status of sexual orientation should not be considered in the hiring process. What are your thoughts on that language? Yeah, I think sexual orientation in particular is um, important. That's going to be very important as opposed to just sex because sometimes it could be construed many different ways. Right. So definitely that specific language would be important to our client. Okay. Our client also is concerned about um, someone who deviates from the norm, mm -hmm. being that you know she appears a little bit differently. Um, and so we want to ensure that there's some sort of language about protecting someone who might deviate from the norm in terms of conduct or behavior. So actually the, the jail operates under this um, policy that is congruent with an ordinance in Campbell County and we cannot extend any advantages or protections that a protected class does not already have under state or federal law. And that is why I asked you if you had any federal law or state law that specifically addresses sexual orientation in the way that you just described it so that we could put that into a policy and since we're kind of operating in, as you called it, the shadow of the law, we cannot put that type of language in our policy. And also just to be clear, whatever language we can come to today has to go through an official approval process. So I can't necessarily ensure that this language is going to be put in the policy. Does that make sense? Because we can't decide. It's, it's, it's above the jail. So I think that in terms of, you know, just making sure that there's a hundred percent guarantee that you would go and you know, like we would present the it. process. Yes. Oh, okay. I can assure. I can ensure we that. We completely understand that sometimes there are procedures in place, and the fact that you're not able to do that is okay. okay. But so we can agree that the proposal would be made for that language to be added. The language that I stated. Will you just repeat it one more time so we can be clear that the status of sexual orientation should not be considered in the hiring process. Right. And yeah. So the, the so there sexual won't, there orientation. Won't be Yes, sexual orientation, yes. Yeah, that, that's great. Okay. Just as long as you know that that is, that is being, um, being suggested. Yes, I just won't be able to include the explanation you provided of the particular scenario describing your client. Does right. that make sense? Yes, of okay. course, because of the conduct and the norm. I understand okay. that the language just does not work in terms of the state and federal laws that you're operating right. under. Yes. We do appreciate that you came prepared with that language, though. That's very helpful. And so we are willing to come down to the $2,000 um, due to the fact that we have reached this agreement in terms of the discrimination policy. In addition, um, the fact that we have agreed to the discrimination policy actually allows us to waive all attorney's fees. And so while you consider our $2,000 offer, we want to be clear that there will be no um, additional prong to discuss attorney's fees. And so this would be the only financial um, aspect of the, the settlement that we'd be looking for. Okay, that is good to know. Um, so I think we're definitely in the ballpark of what my client is comfortable with. I think that a, uh, a good counter offer for, uh, that works with my client's interests would be around 1400 And would that 1400 uh, come with the other things that we discussed? Of course, yes. It would come with everything else that you've previously discussed. And no attorney's fees? And no attorney's fees, correct. Okay. okay. So unfortunately, that number is just too low for our client. Um, okay. $2,000 is the bounds of our authority here today, okay. being that we are, again, operating under this assumption of the difference in salary and the amount okay. of months. And although, you know, if, if the time frame were different, mm -hmm. if it were 2019, at the end of 2019, or a little bit before uh, March of 2020, we could be more flexible, but being that it's more of a mathematical equation at this point. Okay. I think I have an option that might allow my client to, to meet you halfway here. Okay. Okay. And I think my client would be really interested in, since they are proposing this policy, possibly doing some sort of partnership with Rustin that lets the LBGT community know, hey, this is a good place to work. We do address, when we do have issues, we address them head on. In particular, we're addressing it with this policy that we're trying to implement into our hiring process. And I think that that type of, um, press release or just announcement helps both communities. It helps create a diverse community at Campbell and it helps um, the LBGT community know like this is a safe place that's going to address your concerns. And so if that can be included, I think my client would be more than amenable to coming up to your $2,000.
Mark. And so could we just hear a little bit more about what Ms. Walker's role could be um, once that partnership could be, would be in place? Is there a particular role that your client might be interested in? Um, I think that she's just, she's somebody like we mentioned who's very, she's thinking, she's thinking of head, she's thinking ahead, excuse mm -hmm. me. Uh, she's hoping for ways to improve, um, to improve the, her work environment. Um, and so for there to be a partnership like this and uh, for the organization to have the mission that they do, it could really be great. And she would love to be a part of that in some way. Yeah, I, I think, I actually think that would be great. Um, it would be a great symbol to have a piece of that partnership that actually works at um, Campbell and she could definitely be the face of that. I don't see why that would be a problem. I think that would be great. So we just want to make sure that she's not becoming the face of, you know, the main face. I mean, I've- No, it, whatever she is comfortable with her involvement, I, I heard that she wanted to be involved. So whatever to the extent that she wants to be involved with the process, we're totally open for it. So if she wants to be the face, great. If she just wants to work behind the scenes and help um, other parts of her community possibly apply for jobs here, then that's great too. Okay, great. Because I think that, you know, we are comfortable bringing this back to our client in terms of her level of involvement. Okay. Um, the partnership is definitely a great idea, but we don't want to have to say to her, you have to say, no, you know, absolutely X, not. Y, and she Z. doesn't even have to be a part of it. Okay. If, if that's, if she's uncomfortable with that. Yeah. It's totally I think that the, the leader of the affinity group gives her an opportunity in the workplace to really have open discussions with those that are similar, but as like a partnership or, or video or any sort of um, effort that is more public, mm -hmm. there, we just want to ensure that she is comfortable moving forward and doing that. Although, as Marie mentioned, Absolutely. we don't. Absolutely. Okay, okay so great. I do think the partnership is a great idea. We will go back to our client um, to discuss what her level of involvement would really be. But okay. given that she will be leading the affinity group, it sounds like something that she'd at least like to have um, some involvement with. Okay. Um, so, okay, I think we've made a lot of progress so far. I wanna run through everything just to be sure that we're on the same page. We Perfect. have to do a lot to cover. Um, so the number that we agreed on was, uh, sorry, $2,000. Um, we moved away from discussing the difference in compensation between the CO3 and the CO4 and we absolutely understood your, understood your concern there. Um, in addition to the $2,000, uh, Ms. Walker would lead the affinity group like we mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, she would also have a right of first refusal for the, the CO4 position. Um, it's just that she needs to upkeep her employment records. She has had a great track record in the past, but she would of course be held accountable for continuing to operate as in a stellar manner the way she normally does. Absolutely. There would also be an NDA. Um, and the NDA is, is pertaining to the discrimination lawsuit, of course. So within the affinity group, there would be no discussion of anything pertaining to uh, the lawsuit or the fact that, um, or the, fa the lawsuit and, and any issues that, that so transpired like between her, Mr. her and Ms. Hernandez, correct. In terms of the language for a change to the discrimination policy at the jail, um, it, it would be the language that you mentioned um, including sexual discrimination specifically as opposed to just discrimination based on sex because that specific language is really important to provide protection for our um, client. That is something you mentioned it needs to get approved by right. your client or whoever um, at the jail reviews those things. So that's something that you agreed you will take back to your client mm -hmm. for that language to be considered. Can you just repeat the language for me so I understand the language that you're going to be taking back to your client? Yeah, sexual orientation would be included. Yes, sexual orientation, yep. orientation will not be in consideration during the hiring during the process. Right. process. Okay, right. so no discrimination or anything is going to be mentioned. Right. Yep. It's just, it's just pertaining to what factors are considered when employees okay. are considered just for promotions. To be clear on that. And then to specify with that two thousand dollar number, um, it's no attorney's fees. So yes. the two thousand dollars was was all encompassing there. Um, in addition, um, moving back to the future of how her and Ms. Hernandez will co uh, coexist at the jail, uh, she will not be getting any performance reviews from Ms. Hernandez in the future. Correct. And that's because it was really important to our client that her track record is accurate and that she's recognized for the great work that she continues to do. Right. Um, when Ms. Uh, Walker is working, she will never have a shift where Ms. Hernandez is her superior. Correct, they'll be on which, equal. Right, they will be on equal playing fields, which will provide some comfort for a client that she's not answering to Ms. Hernandez, given the offensive words and things that she had heard her say on those two occasions in the past. Um, you were not able to agree to, um, I just wanna make sure I'm getting this clear. So uh, you weren't sure about striking the review in particular, but you said that correct. that was something that, that you would bring right. back to your client. And then in terms of um, mandatory training, 
Mm -hmm. um, your client is looking to uh, was that right? across the board, yeah. That the so mandatory training would be for all employees all at the jail. Employees, correct. So it would be a very all encompassing educational opportunity for everybody. For everybody. And hopefully could improve the culture of the jail moving forward. Right. I so agree. it sounds like we came I, to a great agreement today. Is there anything else you'd like to yeah, cover? Yeah, I just want to mention that that, for, that $600 increase from 1400 to two, uh, 2000 that I had mentioned mm -hmm. was contingent upon that um, agreement with. Um, Rustin in terms of like a press release that we had discussed so if you could just when you take this back to your client if you could mention the importance of that aspect in terms of the partnership in terms of and the our client's ability to level of involvement that yes. she's comfortable yes right. of course so we if will, you could just stress that that's important to my yes client. right we understand the importance of, of the partnership and that could really be great for both parties and we will of course discuss all the details with our client she will let us know whatever she feels comfortable doing but we think that's something that she would love to be a part of. Yeah, great. Thank you for meeting with us today. Thank you I'm, so much. We're excited to then have our, you know, a final agreement once we discuss the tentative few things with our clients. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Hello again. We've been asked to answer a question regarding our negotiation today. And the question is, in reflecting upon the entire negotiation, if faced with a similar situation tomorrow, what would you do the same and what would you do differently? We think we did a good job getting what our client wanted. Um, we got a right of first refusal for the CO4 position and that was really what she was interested in. She wanted the security of knowing that the opportunity would be there for her in the future, even if it wasn't given to her last summer when she originally was hoping to have it. Um, in addition, we wanted there to be a mandatory training for Ms. Hernandez in particular, given that the comments that were offensive uh, had come from her. But ultimately, we were able to get the jail to agree to having a mandatory training for all employees, and that really worked in our client's interest because it would allow for change in the, in the culture of the jail, and she really was hoping to improve that so that she could continue operating and working at the jail, feeling comfortable. Second, we feel that we were flexible. Um, the other side, she mentioned that she was more interested in discussing a global settlement and that she was not very comfortable rooting numbers in the difference between two salary, two position salaries. Um, and so we did a good job taking a break at the right time because it gave us an opportunity to reevaluate what our next offer would be, given that we would now be considering things in their totality. So did you only reevaluate during the break or were you reevaluating as you went through the whole I think we constantly had to be listening actively and sometimes you hear something from the other side and it dictated what the bounds of our authority were with numbers moving forward. So it's definitely something we were doing throughout, but I think we took a break at the right time because the structure of our offers changed um, and it really allowed us to make more informed offers a little bit later on. Uh, finally, we think we did a good job asking some detailed questions. There was some time um, towards the end of the discussion and we thought it would be helpful to ask questions like, how involved would our client be? Um, and little details like that that could give us a better picture of what our client's life would be like moving forward. So now going to what we would do, if faced with a similar situation, what we would do differently. And so first, we did set out the agenda um, specifically with three points, and there was some moving around in order to be able to match on the number. Um, and so we wish that we had just really summarized where we were and exactly why we were making the, you know, making these changes so that everybody was on the same page in terms of the structure of the conversation. Second, we, as Maria mentioned, we were prepared to negotiate based on the um, difference in salary and the length of time for the months. And so we did have a sliding scale, but when we realized that the other side wanted to just do it based in, in totality, we needed to adapt fairly quickly and just make some calculations. And so I guess differently what we would do is just be prepared to make a more of a global offer offer, and just justify where it's coming from as per the months um, because that was the basis of our justification and we felt that that was strong. And then lastly, um, we I wish that I, uh, when, when bringing up the attorney's fees and the discrimination policy that in particular when making that offer that we were able to bring that up earlier as to maybe extract more money. The minute that we had agreed on the non-discrimination discrimination policy moving forward, 
Um, you know, it seemed that the other side was willing to agree to the money and because we were willing to waive the attorney's fees. And so perhaps if we discussed that earlier, we could have even gotten even more money. Um, we did get exactly what our client asked for though, and so we were happy about that. So if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them, but we thank you for your time today. What was the most important piece of information you got from the other side that affected your strategy going forward? I think the most important piece of information was that the employment decision was not made knowing the sexual orientation of our client. Um, we definitely came in prepared to you know, talk and really discuss a lot about why our client felt that she deserved all of the items that we had listed. And so really understanding that we had to kind of switch and change strategies a little because we, we did need to recognize that that was there while also recognizing that the law may or may not be in our favor and our main goal here today was to reach an agreement. And so to get stuck in discussing that was something that we just didn't feel we should do. And I think the way that plays out is maybe having having to shift our justifications or our explanations of how we're coming to this global settlement because now we know that maybe this was an objective process, so whatever concerns our client had. Sorry. <laughs> All right, thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Good afternoon again. My name is Taylor Calvert and I just represented Campbell County Jail in negotiation with Miss Sydney and Miss Maria who are representing our current employee Ms. Walker. So our main objective today was to create a more inclusive and um, diverse working environment that really paid attention to limiting discrimination within the workplace and to protect from future litigation. Um, I'm going to address a two-part question here today. So in reflecting on the ent entire negotiation, what are a couple things that I would do the same and a couple of things I would do differently? So I'm going to start with the things I would do the same and there are two and there are also two things that I would do differently. First, I would really keep my client's interest at the, at the forefront. My client was interested in creating a more inclusive and diverse workplace, limiting discrimination. And I think we were able to address that today with the creative solutions we came to. So we were able to draft some language that addresses sexual orientation discrimination that would be in compliance with the statute. We also, they suggested the affinity group and my client is gonna be super excited about employees being able to get together who have common interests and be resources for each other. And then also my client's interest in protecting from future litigation claims. I was able to get a waiver of claims of this suit and all the, the claims associated with it. An NDA regarding the, um, the, the guarantee of the position, which that could decrease employee morale if that got out. So I was able to obtain that as well. Also, I would maintain a positive relationship with the other team. We both were pretty firm in how we felt about our client's position, and it never got disrespectful. We both kept each other's interests at heart across the table, and I believe that was really productive today to get to those creative solutions. We didn't get bogged down in the merits. We just stood firm in what we believed, and we respected what each other believed, and I, I found that very enjoyable. What I would do differently is maybe not be too agreeing. There are times, for example, I remember, where they brought up the uh, record of her employment and how this performance review from Ms. Hernandez was kind of out of character. And I said, yeah, that is out of character. Like, our client was actually surprised when I didn't really need to because I already had the authority to remove her from Ms. Hernandez, Ms. Hernandez's uh, performance review, review. And what I said maybe gave them a little inclination that my client probably felt that this review that she gave was, um, was personal instead of it's just the review she gave to all the CEOs. She didn't put much effort into it. It wasn't particularly their client. Also, was that, real quick, was that yes. information that was conveyed to them? Was what? That the, inf that the review was the same that was given to the no. no, No, sir, sorry. That was not No, sir. Um, and I also think there are more opportunities to be a little bit more assertive about my client's concerns than I wanted to be, but I was also balancing keeping that employment relationship pause in a positive space. I didn't want to be over assertive, like my client really doesn't, didn't know, he didn't know that she was, that she had this sexual orientation, so how could he have discriminated against her? And I just, I tried to just let them know he didn't know without being overbearing. And so I think maybe there were times that I could have been like um, more assertive about that aspect, about the knowledge that my client actually did have. And when the affinity group issue came up and you agreed to it, did you think about whether having the affinity group might violate the policies already in place? Or well, so my thing was these employees can either get together 
outside of work and have these resources. I didn't necessarily associate it with on time, like on the clock employment, you guys are gonna get to come together and have a conversation about issues. I saw that, I thought of it as more, and I guess I will have to confirm with them an email about these terms is, can she reach out to other employees that are in this community and say, hey, I'm in this community, let's be a resource for each other if we ever feel discriminated against. Not necessarily, I guess, in the context of um, an employment sponsor affinity group. Does that make, that make sense? Okay. And so overall, I think the agreement we came to today did address my client's concerns. It allowed for a better and more inclusive, diverse uh, employment. It, we were at his max, yes, but we also got a lot of protections for him in terms of future litigation, the waiver of claims, things of that nature. We also were able to maintain the privacy of the other employees and their disciplinary actions. That didn't really come up beyond the point of them wanting to know if there were other instances with um, Ms. Hernandez, but they had already known about those, which I ended up finding out about. And we were able to put these, client, uh, these claims behind us for good, which I think was really a top concern of my clients. What about the press release? So the press Where's that coming from? The press release, I was really trying to get some value from my client for that in, that increase between 1400 and the 2000 that they had requested. And that's just so that I think it provides some protection for my client so that in the future, if a discrimination claim comes up, we have this proof that we, we tried to implement this policy in our hiring process. So we're a forward thinking company or a forward thinking institution. And you think that the jail would want a press release to the world that they had? I mean, is that what? what so I, the, I, I didn't guess feel they didn't explore it either. So I mean, again, I, I, I just, up. I'm sorry, it's time's up. Okay. Yeah, anyway. no, you all did great. No, uh, and that goes without saying. At the level you're in, you know, you're expected to do well. Sorry. Um, I thought you guys did a real good summary. Okay, I thought that was really good. Uh, at the end, and, you know, and again, and you reacted well, but controlling the summary is often controlling the ball game. So I, I thought that was very, very good. Uh, in terms of the affinity group, you could have been a little clearer on exactly what you meant. I mean, uh, it may be obvious what an affinity group is or what what it's supposed to do, and and, you, and on the other hand, you can't stop somebody from organizing an affinity anyway. So I mean, what is it? you were trying to get at uh, on, on that side. Uh, I thought your control of the financing was great. You know, the, the way you dealt with the money. Uh, you didn't give it away too early, you know, and, and you hung on to the end. You never know what they could have accepted. So I, I thought that was good. I didn't think the press release was a good idea for the, because, at least that's in my view, because I think a jail really would not want a public interest law firm doing anything. <laughs> Matter of fact, you should have had them sign the NDA as well. I mean, because you don't necessarily want to get them on TV and doing stuff, really, because you can't control it. So that's the only thing that I, I would have, you know, otherwise I thought it was great. So firstly, I, I echo everything he said. I, you all did a great job. Ask, have all of you had a class in negotiations or mediation in law school? You have not. You both have. Okay. I can't lead mine, by the way, just a tout. Uh, no. Uh, you all did good. Did you, each of you have a list of the questions to elicit information that you didn't already know? Okay, that's good. So the key thing I always think is to identify what's confidential information from the other side that I don't know. But you also have to be thinking of how the answer to it's going to affect the assumptions that you made. That's why I asked both of you if you were thinking about how the information you got affects it. Doing it during a break obviously is good, but I think my approach would be to do it at every step. So I always have a list of the assumptions that I'm making because I don't know what the other side's true story is. And then as I'm going through, as I'm getting that information, I'm checking my list of assumptions because believe it or not, almost always those assumptions are going to change as you get facts. You identified the most important thing you learned. That was a key assumption you didn't have. That changed the entire course of it, which I thought, well, okay, you should have recognized too then that that should have been an early question. Highest priority was what was the rationale for the decision and not taking her, uh, giving her that promotion, right? I think you would ask something like what's the process or something like that. That's close, but it's not getting right to that point, right? So I always think some pointed questions to really get some of those hard facts that you need identifying 
sort of the hypothetical fact. What are the critical things that I need to know moving forward with my negotiation? Um, you both did recaps, and that's fantastic. Uh, I don't know if it seemed like it was textbook, which I don't know if that's how you were taught or not. Obviously, you weren't because you didn't take a well, negotiations I class. <laughs> well, <laughs> but but that, that's perfect. As he said, that shows control of it. It also gives you an opportunity. You have to be really paying attention to make sure things aren't missed, and you did that, and that was fantastic. Um, some follow-up. So whenever you're talking about money and you're negotiating money, which never happens at a negotiation, right? <laughs> the rationale for why you're changing your amounts, I think, is very important. Because it could be, a lot of times you'll see it where numbers are being thrown back and forth. I counter with 950. I counter with 650. But if there's no rationale for it, what's the other side going to think? Well, what's their max? They're just trying to lowball it to pay the least that they can. So you provided your justification for it. I didn't quite get your justification for it, but I also didn't see you. You did attack it a couple times saying, well, your, your basis for it is wrong, and I thought that was good, but I didn't think that you kept with that because they're fundamentally wrong in the rationale for why they think they should get money, right? And, and so that was a good point to kind of stand on and really harp it because you're in the right and the facts are on your side. So I thought you could have used that a little bit more to your advantage. You, you all did a phenomenal job, no question. The beauty of being the third <laughs> judge with two fantastic colleagues on the bench simplifies my comments a lot, and mine are, are much more general and less issue-specific. Uh, I thought that uh, Team O had a fantastic uh, balance of participation. It came through all the time, and you also had a clarity of direction which is really important in negotiation, just like it is in litigation. And I felt that uh, Taylor's post-negotiation presentation was just extraordinary. I liked that very much, and I felt that uh, you were very good at stating and meeting your goals and not stating the ones you didn't want to mention, perhaps, <laughs> but in getting where your client wanted you to go. And that came through well. And I thank you all very much and wish you all well. <laughs>